Hello viewers, welcome back to my channel. In today's video session, I shall be discussing on the timers in routing information protocol and the performance of routing information protocol. So, uh, if you just try to look into the video sessions previously, like the topics that I have discussed in my previous video lectures, right from the distance vector routing, okay, then moving to the, an example of the distance vector routing protocol, that is the routing information protocol. So, uh, I guess it can be from lecture number 26 onwards, I am just keep on continuing the topics one after the other and this will be the last one in the related to distance vector routing. First and foremost thing is to learn any uh, unicast routing protocol, we should know the different, the algorithm that is used in this particular protocol. That is the reason we started with uh, distance vector routing because routing information protocol is based on what distance vector routing. So, learning the distance vector routing algorithm, then uh, the network uh, graphs find based on the, like uh, using the distance vector routing algorithm, you are going to construct the forwarding tables, then looking into what the next is the routing information protocol, how to construct the forwarding tables, the initial and the final forwarding tables for each of the routers that are present in the autonomous system and the message format. Finally, anything that has to end is what we need to check the performance of a protocol. So, this will be the last one related to the distance vector routing, this topic. So, here in this video session, I shall be discussing on the timers that are used in the routing information protocol and the performance of the RIP. Now, first and foremost thing you should know is why timers are required. See, this particular routing information protocol is collecting or constructing the forwarding table based on what, based on the uh, routing information that is that it is receiving from its neighbors. Now, in the autonomous system, there will be several routers and every router wants to send its routing information to their neighbors. When all routers try to send at the same time, it is what it is leading to a very huge traffic in the network. For that reason, the router will set the very first timer that is used for this purpose is what the periodic ti timer. Each router will set what the periodic timer, the value is set to 25 to 35 seconds, 25 to 35 in this range. So, so, the router is what it starts from the value 35 when it reaches the count 0, it sends or it uh, forwards its routing information to the neighbor. So, in this way, what care is being taken? All the routers will not be sending the information at the same time and this will definitely what uh, reduce the traffic in the network. So, this is the purpose of the periodic timer. The next one is the expiration timer. Now, if you try to recall that each of the routers is maintaining what the different routing information N1, N2, N3. So, we call these are the different route information that are present in the forwarding table. For each of this route, a expiration timer is set and the value is how much? 180 seconds. Now, every router should receive a route information what within 180 seconds. Suppose if it is not receiving any update for a particular route, then this particular route is what is set to a value 16. The cost in this route is, suppose if initially it is 3 or something, then now it will be set to 16. 16 indicates the destination network not reachable. So, this way the every router will try to maintain what all the uh, rows in its forwarding table. That means the cost to reach the different networks, different destinations should always get updated. Okay? Any time any route information not receiving or a fresh update not receiving within 180 seconds, that particular value will be set to that route information. That means here this timer is set for every row will, every particular route will have a timer set to 180 seconds. Whereas in the periodic timer, the router is having what the timer set. Here each route is having the timer set. Fine. So, this is how the expiration that means if it is not receiving within 180 seconds, we say the route is expired, the destination network is not reachable and the value is set to what 16, 16 indicates unreachable. Next the third type of timer is used as garbage collection timer and this timer value is 120 seconds and when it is used now with the value 16 still it is trying to propagate this particular route information in the network but at the same time it will set the timer okay to 120 seconds once the value becomes zero for this timer then that route is deleted from the what deleted from the forwarding table 
So, this is how a particular entry gets deleted from the forwarding table. With 16, it is still existing in the forwarding table. It is getting propagated in the network, but the timer for that route is set to what? Set to 120 seconds. So, that when it becomes 0, only then the value that particular row or that route information will be deleted from the forwarding table. So, this is the purpose for the garbage collection timer. So, remember three timers are there in the routing information protocol. Now, what about the performance? Ultimately, how do you say a particular protocol is efficient or not when you see the performance of a protocol? So, just decide the performance of a protocol based on these three different attributes or metrics. The first one can be the update messages, second one is convergence of forwarding tables and third one is robustness. Uh, for these three attributes, you are going to check the performance. When it comes to the first category, the first one, the update messages. Now, update messages in RIP, is it happening easily or is it leading to a problem? See, look here, first and foremost thing is the update messages are, uh, the routers are able to easily update their entries, the root information in the forwarding table. That is because RIP is having what? RIP is having a periodic timer set. Not all routers are sending the root information at the same time. So, it is easy for the routers to update the values in the forwarding table correctly. So, with respect to this attribute, we are not seeing any problem in RIP. Hence, we can say yes, it is performing well. But next, let us see the next one, the convergence of forwarding tables. Convergence, in a sense, like finally, what will be the, when there is no root information to get updated in the network, when there is like a complete uniformity maintained at all routers after receiving the updates from all routers, it has converged now. The routing forwarding table has got like in this particular attribute convergence of forwarding tables. We can say that whether RIP is performing well. Yes, it is performing well because see if it is a very huge domain, then only the convergence will take lot of time. But in RIP maximum count is how much a packet can travel up to 15 routers. So that is not a very huge domain. Hence, it can be converged easily and it can be converged in a lesser uh, duration only. This only problem may happen in convergence if there is what? If there is count to infinity occurring. That means a loop is formed between two routers in exchanging the information. Even that problem can be solved with the uh, split horizon or and split horizon with poison reverse. Hence, with respect to this also, we can say yes, RIP is performing quite well. The third parameter you need to check with the perform with the for this performance is robustness the parameter is how robust is this protocol now when you want to decide about this factor remember in rip what is happening each router is receiving the information from its neighbor fine that means the forwarding table r1 is constructing based on what based on what whatever r2 is sending and R2 has received from some other router. Let us take R3. So, that means R1 is receiving from a neighbor, a neighbor in turn is receiving from their neighbor and also what is the information conveyed? Each router is conveying what the complete intern, the autonomous information. Like suppose in that autonomous, if there are six networks or five networks, then for all the five networks, how, what is the next hop and what is the cost to reach? The complete information is sent to the particular uh, router. So, like this, if this R1 is receiving from its neighbor, this neighbor is in turn receiving from its neighbor, that means somewhere in the internet, if a value gets corrupted in the forwarding table, then the same value is propagated to all the routers and the forwarding tables of the routers will definitely get affected with this wrong value. Hence, when we try to uh, this one decide the performance for this parameter, we can say that it is not at all robust. Whereas, for these two parameters, it performs well. So, this is all about the timers in RIP and the performance of RIP. And with this le le video lecture, the topics for distance vector and the RIP ends. So, in the next video session, I shall be explaining you about the, the other intradomain routing protocol. Actually, not the protocol first. First, we need to know the other intradomain routing algorithm and that is the link state routing algorithm. Fine. Hope this is clear to you all. Thank you. Bye-bye. Take care.